Hi everybody, I got a lot of questions in the last reporting cycle about how best to do report cards and gradebooks, so I thought I'd put together a quick tutorial on, on what works best for me and, and some other options that are available. So I'm going to log into Encompass and go to my gradebook. I can use my physics class for this, so I'll click on that. And there's a number of different places where you can work in your report card. The first place, obviously, is comments. So if you come down here under report card to comments, you can see uh, there's a place to author your comments here. And we've talked about some of the predictive text and the comment bank that's available there, all very powerful. If you need to change a student's grade for any reason, you can do it here as well, and it'll overwrite their mark for the report card. You get an indication of how many characters you have left. This is a really good place to be working on your report cards. Um, the learning skills is in a separate section, so you can click on learning skills. Again, you can be working on your learning skills here, and one of the things that can speed up your workflow here is you can literally just type these letters. So if you have a student or a number of students who have, have good or excellent, you can just be typing those letters and moving from one thing to the next. Um, you don't have to use the pull-down menu every single time. Now, the place where I think the most powerful work can be done is if we go back to the overall gradebook and we scroll down and look across to what's called the student achievement profile. So I'm going to click on that student achievement profile. And what it does is it brings up a snapshot of the student's overall performance for the whole year. So across the top, uh, we have an indication of absences and lates. Uh, we have their current mark as it's calculated. We have their, their term mark and then their most recent mark, which I think is pretty powerful. So you can, you can cross-reference their most recent mark with their term mark. And then once we have a final exam in there or a summative, uh, you can cross-reference all three to make a determination about what mark best fits here. And again, you can make a change there if you need to. As we scroll down, uh, we can see how that, how that weighting is divided up between summative and formative. If you have formative assessments that are in there as well, uh, you can use that to kind of inform your decision on this number. In this table, we have an overview of all the assessments that we've done, broken down by, at the top, the essential learnings, and across the side by the, the assessment that it was. So we can see how they did on the individual assessment, but we can also see if we scroll down in a column, we can see how they did most consistently on that essential learning. So if you have essential learning you're hitting over and over again, this will be calculated here. Again, that can be used to help sort of inform what this final number is going to be. Everything's color coded. Below each one, you can see what weight you've assigned to it. If, if that weight doesn't feel right, you can always go back and edit it and see how that plays for the student mark. One of the things that's nice about this, this page is that you can actually edit student marks. So if you had a student who didn't have something handed in, or maybe they did poorly on it, you can show that student how that's going to impact their mark here. Okay, I'm going to put that back. Now, as we come down, if you if you kept track of any conversations, they'll be they'll be noted here, or observations will also be noted here. Uh, if you kept track of learning skills, they'll also be noted here. So, one of the things I've been starting to do is on on my assessments, trying to attribute a learning skill to them as well, so that I have some information to inform my decision on what what their learning skill marks should be. So I can look here and I can look at responsibility. I can see that I marked it a couple times. Most consistently, it's showing up as excellent. There was one that was satisfactory. I got to make a decision about that. I'm going to say, you know what? Most often they're excellent. So I'm going to change that to an E. Now the neat thing here is once you've reviewed all this information, you can scroll right down to the bottom and you can actually see what the comment's going to be. And you can tailor that comment to the information that you're seeing on the screen. So you slide down into the corner here and then move on to the next student. 